All right, let's get this started. Today, I am going to show you how to put together a hardware kit designed to be able to build a 24 volt battery, lithium battery using 18650 cells inside of a 50 cal ammo can. I am putting this together as a kit so when you receive it, it's gonna arrive like this, fully assembled. You will have to take it apart, load your own cells, your own lithium battery cells, and then you put it back together and then uh, you have a working battery, right? So, so let's get started. What are you gonna need? Well, as far as tools, all you should need is a Phillips screwdriver. And then the battery cells. Now let's talk about cells. You can choose new cells. These, for example, right here are Sony VTC6s. These are available uh through ev west i'll put a link in the description of this video or you could use these guys right here these are the lg m36 cells these have more energy than those but those have more power or can deliver more power than these so so it just depends on your application for this battery right also available there are a bunch of u cells that you can harvest out of things like these modem packs these are modem battery packs and what you do is you crack them open and then you extract the cells, you test them, and then eventually you have cells that are usable for whatever application you want. I have videos explaining the whole process on how to do this. And today we're actually gonna use cells from uh, scooter battery packs like this one. These are some of the best battery cells uh, that we have come across lately. These are the LG uh, MH1 cells, 3200 milliamp hours, right? And so what I've done is I've taken apart a pack like that and I have put them in here. So these are U cells, but they're tested. I went through the trouble of testing them and here we go. We have a full pack and that's what we're going to use today. All right, so step one, let's take the lid off of this guy. All you have to do is do that and then you will see the interior of this right this is uh consists of 14 of the pcb boards that hold seven cells and then one bms module right and so you should be able to disconnect all these all you need is a phillips screwdriver so we take the screws off you flip it around right now uh, next you disconnect the XT90 if it's connected and then you pull out all three of these modules the easiest way to do it is just to do that BAM and just like that you see the whole module here right it's three towers and they're all interconnected this connects the high power connections and this connects all the sensing leads for the BMS okay so pay attention to this there's three towers and one of the towers is gonna have the BMS right in the center right center is gonna be BMS and then two modules battery modules on bottom two battery modules on top and then the other ones are just five regular modules with the batteries we're gonna have to take apart this entire assembly here and then load it up with batteries and then put it back together so we start with disconnecting the ribbon cable here be careful and not to undo the uh, connectors there if you pull too hard too fast then you're gonna do that in fact I might just send these without this ribbon cable connected so that you don't have to disconnect it here's the ribbon put that aside now you have three towers here's another tool that you are going to need it's probably going to be a 930 seconds 932 i don't know what it is on metric but you're going to need that to make it really easy to take the plastic ones you will need a different one for the metal standoffs now here's something else that we have to pay attention the top one on tower one has the cable on the second on the second tower here is on both sides and then on the third one is on the very bottom with the bms on the center right and it's got the xt90 pigtail so these pigtails are kind of important 
try to keep them the same way. If you make a mistake and put it on the second or put it on the bottom over here, I think it'll be fine. This connects to here. Now, if you put it all the way down here, you should be able to still connect it, but well, it's not the end of the world, but you could run into some problems. So it's better if you pay attention when you're doing this step and then just recreate the same order of boards. Okay, at this point now we can actually start loading up cells, right? Now, uh, with these cells, I recommend for them to all be at the same voltage, right? And the way you can do that is, of course, if you just tested them all the same way, then they should all be the same way using those chargers that we used to test, right? Like the Sandflare uh, or any of the other brands. So, positive, negative, right? Positive is the one that's got the smallest one. The bigger one is the negative. The boards are marked negative, positive. There's all positives on this side, all negatives on this side. So you start loading the cells. So here's the easiest, quickest way to check to make sure that all the cells are the same voltage and are and have good voltage, right? You you can get one of these. It's called a battery go VG dash eight S. And then you can make this little cable. I'll include the information to do this thing here on the description of this video. But what this allows you to do is you connect it onto the board here. And as you're connecting the batteries, you should be able to see them pop up, like here. You'll need at least two of those batteries for this thing to turn on, right? And as you can see here, the voltages are pretty, pretty close. One is at 4.1. 05 volts and the other one's at 4.093 there's only a difference of 11 millivolts now that's pretty close enough as you load the batteries here then you can get to see the other voltages and it shows you in a graphic in a graphical way see here's a problem that this will help you this thing didn't sit correctly and so it's not making a connection is not making a solid connection in here right and I noticed that because now there's four cells but there's only three bars on this one right so this is very useful for many many reasons it allows me to check that uh, had I not been using this I might I might miss that and I might be almost done with the full build but this board here would not be useful because it doesn't have one of the cells loaded correctly Okay, so let's take that cell back off. Yeah, it's uh, this paper isolator sometimes getting away. There we go, loaded correctly. So I guess the best way is to load them to the positive side first and then the negative. Positive, then negative. There we go, there's our first board, fully loaded. And as you can see, it's pretty balanced. All the cells are mostly uh, within 22 millivolts of each other. So that's pretty close, that's pretty good. Now let's do all the other boards. All right, now that we have these five boards loaded up, let's put together the little tower. We're gonna make this one the bottom, which means we're gonna put the little rubber, the little nylon feed on the very bottom. You'll also need this number six socket to tighten the uh, brass standoffs. Okay. just like that our first stack is done now let's do the second one Uh, 
on and do the third one. All right, here we go. This one connects to this one, this one connects to that one. Let's put it in the box. You are done loading up your cells. That was easy. We'll get our box back over here. So the first one you're going to connect is the one with the BMS. This one right here. And what that allows you to do is to actually check this guy. Oh, it doesn't work. Why? Because these guys are not connected. So what you have to do, just to test it out, let's connect one of those. Okay, one way to quickly uh, test this unit is to put uh, just part of the ribbon connector in there, just to check to see if it's working. Okay, and I think what you have to do is disconnect it and then connect it again for the BMS to turn on and here you see the level the battery level right you can turn it off you turn it on okay so the problem is that once you put all the other batteries and it gets really hard to connect and disconnect this XT90 so what you'll have to do is you'll have to load up the ribbon connector in here now okay so now it's there so now you disconnect the XT90 reconnect it And we have power. You see it? We have power, right? So then, what you do, then put a couple screws on here so this one doesn't move around as much. So then, next step is you load up the second or the second module. Connect the high power uh, connector first. There we go. Then you load up the third one. And last, power module. And then you connect the high power one. Now there shouldn't be any sparks in here because these are all the same voltage because all the cells are the same voltage. If you see a spark in here, it's probably an indication that there's something wrong, that there's a difference in voltage in the, the different modules here, the different sections of those modules. So that's not a good thing. So next step, what you wanna do is you wanna put some screws in here so these modules are not moving around. If they move too much, they could short out. All right, so now that you put the screws and these don't move around, now we can do the final step, which is the, the ribbon cable. All right, and after that, you're ready to go. You basically just put the lid. You might have to flare out the thing here to make some room for the screws. Here we go. Bam. And then you have the meter in here. It says it's 100%. Let's measure the voltage here. 28. Point eight. There you go. Now what can you use these for? All kinds of stuff. Anything that's 24 volts. You can do 24 volt inverters. You could do grid tie inverters. You could even use it in some automotive uh, applications that need 24 volts. Of course, this is limited by the included or onboard BMS. And the BMS system that we put in here is only good for 60 amps which is about 1200 watts. So this is good for about 1200 watts. Now, depending on the type of cells you choose for your battery box, you can end up with a battery capacity of anywhere between 900 watt hours to like the one we build of 1.1 kilowatt hours. This battery can be used to power 12 volt devices by using one of these step down modules available in sizes from 100 watts to 1000 watts 
you pretty much can find the one that works for your application. Of course, this 24 volt battery can also be used to power 24 volt devices. And by using two in series, you can also use these to power a 48 volt device. I hope you found this project useful and I wanna thank you for watching this video. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. All together.